the stage is something else absolutely i think because you know that in film it can be fixed you know later you can give another shot you can dub uh, a line that you have fluffed but on stage there are no retakes and you are in front in front of a live audience so it's quite different so you know how do plays run for years on broadway you know with the same actors is because we know how to keep that uh, sense of that's the that's the craft of an actor how to keep that fresh and it's a good question because in film you don't have to do that that is why theater is so exciting you repeat the same thing night after night and you have to keep it as exciting as fresh as new as when you did it the first time in film you just give the shot or you know maximum you give it two three four times you know and uh, if there's a technical glitch maybe a couple of times more but then it's it's done you don't have to recreate that uh, emotion that you know that feeling again it's not necessary but theater challenges you to do that again and again and again and again and keep it new and keep it fresh and keep it like it happened for the first time I've got a chance also to work with some wonderful actors from India, some legendary actors from Mr. Bachchan onwards, and I have so I've enjoyed all that very much, and I have been lucky to have worked in a lot of international things, uh, including the two Marigold films where I got a chance to work with people like Bill Nye and you know Richard Gere and my two favorites Judy Dench and Maggie Smith. Uh, Good acting is good acting anywhere in the world. I've done Canadian films, I've done South African films. Uh so, you know, of course in England, work in England, some work in America. One of my films from America is traveling uh, all over and doing very well. It's an independent film. So, I feel for me good acting is truthful acting, you know. It's it comes from you from inside it's spontaneous it's natural it's deeply felt and that doesn't matter where in the world you do it it's very strange it is good acting is good acting anywhere in the world the couple of differences is, uh, that are there i think uh, and we're becoming more and more professional in india so you know the differences are becoming less and less and, and the gaps are narrowing i would say from 20 years ago when i started that really 22 21 22 years ago they are becoming very very uh, only only all the younger people who are directing and producing stuff they are going the very very professional uh, way of uh, of work from abroad you know how people work abroad uh, so the differences are less now i would say one of the marked differences is Uh, between working there and working here is the style of acting you know our style of acting was slightly different but we are also going the more realistic the more naturalistic the more less performance oriented way in our style of acting um, so we are changing in that sense this was a different some years ago you know the style of acting say in a commercial hindi film was different from uh, from a film in the west they have a very different style of acting so you have to recalibrate when you're acting with different uh, people different actors but that's a growing experience for an actor you know it's a learning i i again i'm blessed because when you work with very different styles of acting you also keep on uh, trying to you know up your game when you're acting with people who are extraordinary actors themselves so um and i think one of uh, the differences is uh, i would say with uh, people here is that um, we you know as indians it's a racial trait we express everything uh, very strongly with a lot of uh, body language and all that and that's not the style of uh, a lot of people who are non indian because that's a racial thing it's a cultural thing it's a, it's not to do with uh, with good or bad acting it's just a style and some of the people love our work from from the indian film industry because it's it's sort of you know it's large it's emotional it's it's uh, it's beautiful to look at it's dramatic it's uh, colorful so that's part of our uh, indian personality you know so i wouldn't say that there is a anything right or wrong about it it's just different that's all 
Mm, I'm really excited. I, I haven't been to Singapore with a show for a very long time. It's uh, one of my favorite cities to come and perform in. For me, it's just the excitement of coming uh, out of India with a play, which we've been doing for so many years, traveling with our plays. But it's the first time. So just the that idea of getting out. I can't tell you how how excited my cast is because some people in my cast uh, have not been shooting and have not traveled uh, abroad at all during this time. So there's so excited to just be out of the country and feel you know it's a, it's a sense of feeling normal again i think that's the most important thing uh, about traveling after the pandemic that we feel oh gosh life has somewhat come back on the rails and you know uh, we're feeling all normal again so that's on a personal level on a professional level i'm just delighted to be coming with a show uh, after so long uh, we haven't been anywhere. This is our first trip abroad after the pandemic with with a play. So uh, it's just very exciting to to be back on stage abroad and bringing a new play. Uh, I'm looking forward to great food, which I always do in Singapore. I'm a I'm a seafood uh, person, and I I love the food in Singapore, Asian as well as seafood, all all there. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, you know just. Uh, having a lot of uh, fun being together uh, on a trip which is part of the, the whole theatrical experiences uh, you know the cast and crew being together and enjoying so of course i'm sure they're looking forward to some shopping i'm sure ira's looking forward to shopping <laughs> and uh, just generally having a, a, a nice time i mean singapore is a lovely city what is there not to enjoy With NRI audiences, there's hardly any difference because they are whatever it is, they're very much Indian at heart. And, uh, you know, they understand the language, the nuances. For instance, in say Dance Like a Man, somebody's talking with a South Indian, slight South Indian accent, slight Gujarati accent. They get all that, you know. Um, and uh, they totally relate to uh, the vocabulary and, you know, wo Indian words that might be used in the play because of, I told you I'm mostly interested in Indian English uh, writing. So they're all very much uh, plays rooted in, in the Indian ethos. For me, it's, it's to, perform, uh, for, to perform for NRI audiences is very, very similar to performing for Indian audiences. It is performing for non-Indian audiences, NRI or over here in India. That is much more challenging and much more interesting for me because how, to see how they react to very Indian material, which is said with, um, you know, sort of not strong Indian accents, but with sort of Indian accents. And sometimes it's slight Indian uh, accents of certain regions. Since this play would be very interesting. I, I mean, I already had one uh, uh, sort of reaction to it because an English gentleman saw it in Hyderabad. The, the migrant story, all the other stories are in English, but uh, so Ida does two and Joy does two. And Joy's one story is in English, Ida's are in English, mine is in English. But Ida, uh, Joy's second story, the migrant story, is in um, Hindi and, and sort of with a Bhojpuri accent, Bihari accent. So now to see how a foreigner, uh, non-Indian I mean, would react to that story is very interesting because it's got a lot of physicality and all that, but it is in Hindi. And um, I was very amazed because this particular gentleman in Hyderabad who, who uh, has obviously seen a lot of theatre in England also, he loved the story. I said, but did you get it? I mean, he said, I don't have to understand everything. I sort of got the gist of it and I love the performance and all that. People who are non-Indians are also going to come and see the play because the lockdown experience is a global experience. If well, you know, Shobha felt very strongly uh, about many things during the lockdown and she said that um, she in a sort of a you know, furious wave she uh, wrote all these stories she wrote about 24 25 stories and she uh, simon and schuster was publishing the book and since you know everything was under lockdown she couldn't really have a proper launch and she asked uh, ira and i to read these stories as as uh, you know a way to, to launch the book online so, excuse me, there were two, so there were two uh, stories. Uh, she actually sent us four or five stories and uh, we went through them, they went through them, the publishers went through them and uh, 
we looked at the ones that would be suitable and we found these two stories which ultimately are part of the play uh, vodka and not vodka and no tonic and lockdown funeral so these two stories we read um, as part of the launch of the book online and they got a terrific response both the stories and how we read them and people started saying you know why don't you look at it as a piece uh, for the stage and i like them very much as well so that's the germ that was the germ of the idea and we started looking at other stories in the book how to you know sort of uh, uh select a very up so the idea was for me the idea was to do them as monologues and to do them as a very wide selection of uh, stories very different from each other so there's a young couple there's a older woman around my age whose husband has died and she's attending his funeral and it's a look back at her life uh, she's been estranged from him and you know all that then there's a migrant who uh, is in love with a woman here and doesn't want to leave but he has a family and children back home and uh, he's a construction worker and she's also a construction worker and it's a very poignant very moving story new people would relate to it because we've all been through this thing but i didn't expect this kind of reaction it's had a it's had a phenomenal uh, reaction people have really really enjoyed the play and related to you know story the stories in it uh, so it's that's been a, a quite um, wonderful surprise the idea was to look at stories from the point of view of my lens was the pandemic was a trigger that that changed things for people in their relationships that was my area of interest i think to some level it was also shobha's area of interest because you see a, a, a global phenomenon like that you can look at through several lenses my lens was human relationships how did it affect human relationships you know uh so whether it's this young couple two young two couples of different kinds or the migrant or this older woman or a young girl who has to leave her job and you know been independent and she's gay and she's independent and she's lived her own life and suddenly no job and has to come back and live with her conservative parents so how did it affect us in our daily personal sort of intimate lives you know an examination of that actually and um, i must say that, that and so the stories have different um, you know sort of uh, economic backgrounds cultural backgrounds uh, different ethos is you know it's, it's it's the wide span of people uh, uh, that it that it looks at that the first story is kind of at the beginning of the pandemic 25 days into it the second story is kind of a few months into it <clears throat> the third story is i would say a little bit uh, further up because people were allowed to go out they were allowed to go to parks for a little while and have you know a little exercise and then the fourth story is when the whole massive migrant thing sort of you know exploded the last story is almost 80 days 90 days into the lockdown so it is a kind of a, it is about a period in our lives you know it's not that uh, uh, i mean 10 years from now that is why looking at it, at the pandemic through the lens of relationships will never really date the play because it's not about that the backdrop is the the pandemic and the lockdown but how did it affect us as human beings psychologically in our uh, emotionally in our in our lives in our relationships that is what it's an examination of Thank you.